Hi, I'm Jim Ross, cinematographer with Cinematics with another episode of Grip Truck Extras in my ongoing coronavirus marathon of videos. This series is about items you wouldn't normally find on a g and &E inventory, but you should consider keeping in your kit, whether you have a grip truck or you work out of your car. Today, the squeezer. The names you'll find working in this business for grip and electrical equipment can bring a smile to your face. C47. <laughs> Make you giggle. A blimp. Pew, pew, pew. A blimp with a dead cat. Yeah. He's still alive. <coughs> it's not really a cat, Fred. <coughs> and sometimes make your eyes roll. A butt plug. Wait, Papa, why is this called a butt plug? Never mind. Don't worry about it. But just why? Just, just give it to me. Thanks. <laughs> But when I call out to a grip to bring me a squeezer, non-industry people always raise their eyebrows wondering what the heck I am talking about. Now, this piece of equipment is called a squeezer. It is basically a dimmer switch mounted in a plastic conduit box with these heavy duty plug and receiver. Now, these are so basic that gaffers and DPs tend to just go to the hardware store and get the parts and build them themselves. They're called squeezers because if you are familiar with the early dimmer switches, you had to press to turn them on and spin the knob. Well, when they're mounted in a box like this, you squeeze them like this. Now, these dimmers are not made to handle a high load. Therefore, we rarely use them for actual film and video lighting. Although I do use them with my smaller 100 watt fixtures like Lowell Pros and Peppers. Where I use them all the time is on practical lighting that is in the shot or on the set itself. When you have a lamp that is in the shot, like when you're shooting an interview or doing some work in a home or filming on an uh, independent film, the lights can be too bright and will clip in your image. But you still want the light in the shot. So to bring them down, you must either swap the bulbs out, which still might not work, or a better fix is to call for a squeezer. And then you can dim the light to exactly the setting you need it. So it still appears to be giving off light, but no longer blows out in your scene. Now keep in mind, a squeezer will not work with a spiral fluorescent as they cannot be dimmed. Also, many LEDs can't be dimmed. Now some people use streaks and tips to spray the bulb, but I am most often working on corporate sets and want to leave the set the same way it was when I arrived. I don't want to spray paint the client's light bulbs and later they're wondering what that smell is and why is that light so dim and smoking? So head on down to Lowe's and grab yourself a dimmer and a conduit box and a couple of leads like this and you'll be in business for just a few bucks. I'd suggest making more than one as they are invaluable to have in your kit. Well, that's all for this tip. Please sure to leave your tips and suggestions in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode, and I hope you'll join me again for another Grip Truck Extras. For Cinematics HD, I'm Jim Ross, and when all this coronavirus stuff is over, I'll see you on set. Here's a bonus. Keep a tennis racket in your grip truck. Now, I don't really keep a tennis racket in my grip truck, but while filming this, I was being hounded by a bumblebee the size of, well, the size of a tennis ball. So I uh, didn't want to use the flying insect killer like I recommend in one of the other vlogs. So I went and got this tennis racket out of my house uh, and uh, took a couple swings at him and I didn't hit him. Just wanted to kind of get him out of here and he's not been back, or she's not been back. I don't know the sex of those things. Uh, so I may keep this in the grip truck going forward. Hey, see you on set.